Kilby with Mortgage Express, and I'm going to show you how you can apply online if you'd like to. First, you go to my website, which is www.terrykilby.com, and you're going to see a homepage that looks something like this. It may look a little bit different, but you're going to have a link up here that says, click here to start a loan application. So you're going to click on that to begin with. Then you're going to get a page like this. And when you're first coming on here, you're going to set up a new account down here. You put in your email address and whatever password that you want. We won't know what your password is. If you want to have a secret question and a secret answer, you can, but it's not necessary. Now, I, I've already gone on here and put in a dummy application. And so when I go back, I will sign in up here. So then I log in. And then this is where you start filling out information. So I'm going to scroll down. You're going to put your legal name, middle initial, and last name. You don't have to put a middle initial if you don't want to, but it's probably advisable unless you have a very unusual name because this will be used when we pull your credit and we don't want to get you confused with some other person who has a similar name. Anyway, here you're going to put your home address, your home physical not your P.O. box, but where you actually live. There'll be a place somewhere else where you can put a mailing address if that's different, if you want to. Home phone, business phone, cell phone. If you only have a cell phone and you don't have a home phone, put the same number in both places because the computer will require some type of home phone number, but that could be the same as your cell. And then how you might, where you might want to be contacted. Maybe it won't matter. But, you know, whether you'd rather be contacted at work during the day or at home, whatever. And then who referred you? Right here, I just put John Realtor, but, you know, however you learned about me or my company. Then we're going to hit next. Right here, you're going to put down what type of property you're looking for. In this case, I'm pretending like I'm going to buy a property um, and that I'm getting pre-approved. So here, I put primary residence, but maybe you're getting a second home or maybe you're buying a rental property. Whatever type of property it is. Now in this case, I want to get pre-approved so I don't necessarily know the, uh, the property that I'm going to be buying. I don't know the address. So I put it here, to be determined. And then if you know what city and state and zip, you can put that in there. At least put, you know, a city. It doesn't have to uh, be the one that you wind up with. If you know that you want a 30-year 30, 30 fix, then go ahead and put that. Or if you know that you want an adjustable rate mortgage, then you can indicate that. Um, the, the, what rate you're desiring, whether it's a purchase or a refinance, what the approximate loan amount is, the approximate sales price, the approximate down payment. Now just know this can easily change, so don't worry about it. You don't even have to put anything in here if you don't want to. Okay, next. Your social security number, your date of birth, approximately how many years you've been in school, with 12 being high school, whether you're married, unmarried, separated, whether you have any dependents, and if so, their ages. If you're going to have someone else that's applying with you that's going to be on the lawn, you can check here, and then it will ask for their information. Next. Your current address, and then here's where you would put your mailing address if it's different. If it's the same, then I just click this button where it says copy from present address, and it'll just pull this over. How long you've been at this address, whether you own or rent, if you've been at your current address for less than two years, then you need to put in a, a previous address where you were at, at, you know, immediately before your current address. And then how long you were there and whether you owned or rented at that address. Next. Here's where you're going to put your current employer and the address and work phone number. This is all important to have. What your title is how long you've been at that address, um, and then whether you're self-employed. If you have been at your current address for less than two years, then you'll need to put where you worked previously. This um, would, could
could either be where you worked previously or it could be a second job that maybe you have right now. Maybe you're, you have two jobs at the moment. But just know that you will have to show where you've been working or what you've been doing for the last two years. So if this isn't for two full years, then you'll have to put what you were doing. If you were like going to school, you know, maybe you were going to the University of Portland, then you could write that down there and just say student and that's what you were doing and you could put, you know, your home address, a home phone number if you wanted to. And then what dates you were at that, you know, um, employment or school. Whether you had any income. Okay, next. Okay, this is where you're going to break it down. Now, maybe you get a flat, um, you know, contract for so much per year. Then you have to use this drop down and just say, okay, per year I make this amount. Or you can break it down and say per month, or you can say per week, however you want to put it. But, you know, just make sure that you have this part filled out first and then make this part based on that. Uh, write down whether you feel like you get much overtime, and if so, how much? Whether you get commission income, do you get any rental income? Um, other income might be Social Security, it could be a pension, um, whatever. You can't count roommate income. So if you have a roommate or whatever, it, unless you count it on your tax returns, it, you can't really count it, so you could do that blank. But if you have any other sources of income, please put them down. And then here you can indicate what those types of income are. There's all kinds of things that are connected with the military, your social security, pension, um, things like that. Just see if any of them apply. Next. Here's where you put down your checking and savings accounts or any kind of mutual funds or investment accounts. Um, this is a drop down, so you just indicate the type of account it is and the institution. You don't necessarily have to have their address, but you absolutely have to have the account number and what the current balance is. So however many accounts that you have, um, you could put down there, um, mutual funds or savings account, whatever the case may be, and the account number. I put the 401k here. But if you wanted to, there's another place that you could put it, but it, it's probably a little bit better to put it here so that you have an account number. If you own individual stocks, then you can write down the company name and, and how many you have and what their current market value is. Um, vested interest in a retirement account, this is where you could put the amount in a 401k that's vested if you wanted to. I think it's actually better to go up here because we'll have the account number, but you could wanted to. If you uh, own a business, what you think it's worth is. As far as life insurance, leave it blank unless you have, you know, a lot of cash value there. Um, if it's a term policy where someone is just going to get paid a certain amount and it doesn't have a savings feature on it, then um, just leave that blank. If you've already put earnest money down on the purchase of a new home, then you would write that down here. Here you write down any vehicles that you may have and what their approximate value. Don't get wrapped up in you know trying to analyze too different, you know too hard what your car is worth because it doesn't really matter. So just you know do an approximation. Down here you can put other assets if if you want to if you've got things that that are of particular value like a boat or a motorhome or something, but. Again, this is not really necessary, so most people just leave that blank. Next. Here, now this is important. Where it says monthly payment, make sure you put the minimum monthly payment, the least amount you could pay and still be in good standing with your company, whatever credit company it is. So in other words, maybe you pay 400 a month towards your visa payment, but you're only required to pay, pay 250 We want the 250 to show. In other words, the least amount that you would have to pay. And then the same for any car loan that you may have or other loans. If you own a mortgage, then obviously you're going to put the balance here and what your monthly payment is there. If you're required to pay 
alimony or child support or separate pay, uh, payments, separate maintenance payments, then you write who you pay it to and what the payment is. Most people don't put this down, although you could if you wanted to. And then whether, if you rent, then you can put that here. If you don't rent and you own, then write down what the principal and interest is on your mortgage and then what you pay per month for your insurance and what you pay for your taxes. Now, if you have it all lumped together, then you can put the principal and interest here and then put your escrow payment in one of these two boxes, either under the real estate taxes or the hazard insurance. And then if your statement shows what you pay in mortgage insurance, if you do, you can write that down here. If you pay homeowners insurance, I mean homeowners association dues, because you have a condo or a townhouse, then indicate that. Next. Here's where you're going to list any real estate that you do own, the property address, what type of property it is, um, whether it's a pending sale, maybe it's a rental property that you're going to keep, whatever the case may be, what your balance is, what the approximate market value is. I know you may not know this for sure, most people don't, but just a, an educated guess as to what you think it's worth and then what the monthly rents are. Um, right here, you can just lump together any what you think the taxes and the insurance is on, on the particular rental property, if, if it is one, or even if it's not, if it's your home, what the taxes and insurance are. And then you've got room here for four properties. If you own more than four properties, it will pop up and let you do more. And here's next. Okay, these are just yes, no questions. Um, and so just answer these. Most people are a U.S. citizen. Most people are planning on occupying the property as their primary residence. But, you know, just whatever the case may be, answer those. And then down here, um, this is for government, government monitoring to make sure that lenders in general are not um, discriminating against people of other cultures and, and uh, races. So uh, you can put, if you want to, do not wish to furnish, but um, if you don't mind, put whether you're Hispanic or Latino, yes or no, whether you're white, Asian, African American, whatever, um, and then your sex. And then right here, this is the end, so if you've gotten everything completed, then you hit submit application. If there's things that you haven't finished and you need to go back, then you just hit log out and then you can come back and sign in and finish the application at a later time. Anyway, if you've got any questions at all or if you'd like me to take the application face-to-face -face or by phone, then feel free to ask, but most people prefer to do it on their own at night, you know, when they're in the pajamas or on the weekend, and so this is just a convenience factor for you. Thanks again, and give me a call if you've got any questions.